Well, let's uh, keep on that story. Paul McMullen is a former News of the World executive and former member of the newspaper's investigations team. He says that the use of illegal techniques was no secret of the paper and that senior editors were aware that this was going on. And he joins us from London. Paul McMullen, thanks very much for coming in. Can I first get your reaction to the arrest of former colleague Andy Coulson? Um, oof, yeah, I mean, I actually feel a, a bit like a fugitive myself. I mean, Scotland Yard have tapped me up three times now and made three official requests for me to uh, go into the yard, and not as a witness, but uh, to be interviewed under caution, which means as soon as I walk in, they'll arrest me too. And uh, I haven't been home for three days, and uh, I don't know, um, it's a really strange time. Five of my colleagues have been arrested. Um, and well I mean this is the thing that's so unfair I mean we were the foot soldiers we although I moved up so my phone's beeping so I'll just turn that off let's throw it away well, you're, um, cle you're clearly a man under pressure and, and obviously people want to speak to you I mean are you expecting arrest uh, well uh, to be honest I thought not and I have had a lawyer advising me uh, thankfully paid for by the Guardian who kind of broke this and actually this is how the story started with me um, and uh, I think her concern was that I may have implicated myself bizarrely to Hugh Grant of all people. Um, if, I don't know if you followed that uh, strange twist in the tale. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a quite a strange, uh, strange few days. But anyway, I was going to say, um, am I sorry that Andy Coulson's been arrested? Well, to be honest, no, because I was really cross that, you know, I first got my uh, job at News of the World in 94 under Piers Morgan uh, and Rebecca Brooks was my direct boss as features editor. And so for years we you know, did uh, lots of uh, investigations, many of them were perfectly le legitimate and you know, for example I remember turning over a prison governor who was sneaking female prisoners out so he could have his way with them. And I think most people would have thought at that stage, well, there's nothing wrong with an investigative reporter, um, you know, getting the governor's bank details and hacking into his phone and seeing what he was up to. And in the end, he was fired and everyone said, clap, clap, clap. But later on, using the same techniques, we, I don't know, did we get lazy? Possibly we did. And it almost became the first port of call. And it would, you know, there were really Andy Coulson should have reined it in and Rebecca Brooks should have reined it in. But uh, instead, what, what they have said for the last uh, last year, it was, oh, it was a rogue reporter. We didn't know it was going on. And it's like, hang on, you know, you are the people who are directing us to do these things. You're our bosses. You know, at least have the decency to say, you know, sometimes uh, an investigative journalist has to stray into that semi-legal uh, grey area that, you know, if you're catching a politician who's fiddling his expenses or fiddling with his secretary, that's fine. You know, no jury would convict a journalist of illegally hacking into his phone. But where it went so badly wrong is, you know, you got a few good results and then they just started doing it to not just people like Hugh Grant and Sienna Miller, but to, uh, you know, the ordinary man, the reader, uh, and, you know, most stupidly of all, they started doing it to victims of crime. And we know about the Millie Dowler thing and that half-witted private investigator deleting her messages so her phone came back to life briefly and her parents, you know, a parent myself, I can only imagine what they must have gone through at that point and uh, that's why the papers closed and it should have been Andy Coulson and Rebecca Brooks, the editor and the deputy editor, carrying the can. Uh, instead they've just said, oh no, it was our reporters. And, and, so, and so five of us and you're saying then that these senior editors, uh, Andy, Andy Coulson and uh, Rebecca Brooks, were fully aware of what was going on? Uh, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> no, I mean, when I said about the Millie Dowler thing, I, I, I am fairly sure, in fact, I'm 100% certain, I can imagine how that happened. I mean, you have an editor shouting and screaming at you, this is a big story, you know, we're an exclusive uh, paper that comes out on Sunday, so if you get your story on Wednesday, you've got to sit on it for a few days, so you've got to get something different. So you've got your boss shouting at you from above, come on, what, let's get something on this. So you ring your police contacts, you ring your private eye contacts, and then you're putting pressure on them, and then the freelance private eye goes a little bit further than he should have done, and he ends up hacking into Millie Dowler's phone, listening to the messages. And, I mean, some of my colleagues have said he, he wasn't just deleting the, you know, the silly messages from, like, her friends saying, oh, we miss you, but the ones that actually 
gave some information that he so he deleted it so no one else could listen to them so it would stay exclusive i don't know if that's true or not but i mean that's kind of how underhand and out of hand it was getting um, so, I mean, no, so you, you, okay. fr you freely admit yourself that uh, you, you personally commissioned private investigators to, as you say, commit several hundred acts which could be regarded as unlawful. What do you mean by that? Um, well, uh, I think when police seized the records, when they went into the private investigator's office and took all his files, I think they counted something like 13,000 searches. Now, a lot of searches are perfectly legitimate. I mean, for example, Kylie Minogue's arrived in London and we just want to know if, where she's rented a flat or a house. So you, that's fairly legitimate. But there's other searches, uh, you know, like you might have had an ex directory phone number or you might have had a mobile and you wanted to get an address from a mobile, so you turn that round. Um, that are uh, in this kind of grey area. I mean, there seem to be, uh, for investigative journalists, there appear to be uh, the, the grey arts and the dark arts, and the grey art, arts are kind of OK. You, most people would think that's fine, and then the dark arts, absolutely not fine, you know, hacking into non-celebrities' phones. Um, I mean, very few people have any sympathy for someone, you know, like Kylie or like Hugh Grant, who earns five million quid a picture, just bleating on, oh, someone listened to my messages. Well, come on, get over it. You know, most people in Britain earn 200 quid a week for a, a hard week's work and would willingly swap places. Well,